then uh, good evening uh, everybody um, and welcome to uh, the half hour webinar supporting language teachers to support migrant uh, integration into the UK my name is Bob Dignan I'm a director of a UK based company called York Associates and have been involved in language training uh, education probably for over 25 years um, I'm joined by Astrid uh, based in Germany Astrid do you want to say a few words about yourself Yes, hello everybody. So my name is Astrid. I'm a language teacher. I've been teaching German as a foreign language as well as technical and business English for about 15 years. And um, I've been working with migrants during the last five years. And so in this project, I had the chance to test out some of the materials and I will report on that a bit later. Cool, thanks Astrid. Yeah, we encourage you, we only have half an hour um, but we encourage you to write comments or questions during the webinar in the chat. Astrid or I will monitor those depending on who is, who is speaking, and we'll try and respond to that as much as is possible. So let's get started. I mean, what's, what are the objectives today? Um, I mean, really, it's to inform you about the All In project. Uh, the All In project, and it's a European project, took place across two years with a particular mission to develop a, a set of materials for training the trainer, uh, for training language teachers, and for training actually students as well. I'll tell you about that in a second. It's also to inspire you, hopefully, uh, if you're interested in what I talk about, to go and look at the materials, to go and look at the website of the project, because essentially we've developed free material uh, for you guys to use and to customize and to cannibalize to suit your context. So. I'm very excited if you find the content interesting and are inspired to go away and use the material. And then thirdly, I mean, I'm hoping also to stimulate interest in the subject. I mean, Astrid and I are very committed to this whole area. Although the project has now ceased, uh, we are very keen to do more in this field. And if there is interest from you, from your institutions, to talk more about this or to explore collaboration, then we will invite you to get in touch with us and hopefully uh, have further conversations. So let me just then explain All In uh, as, a, as a concept. It's, um, it's an Erasmus project, a so-called K2 educational project funded by the European Union over two years. These kinds of projects, which are still ongoing and perhaps interesting for your institution, are multinational consortia type projects. And in this project, we had six partners from uh, Germany, Sweden, two from Spain, one from Romania and one from Austria. Um, the budget was 300,000. That's the typical uh, budget of this kind of project. Uh, I was representing a German based company, Kirschner Management, as project lead. And essentially what we were trying to do was to enable language teachers to make a bigger difference when it comes to enabling the social inclusion of migrants during their integration training or during the language training which actually happens in country when migrants come into EU countries. So that was the idea to enable language teachers to take a bigger role to make a bigger footprint on people's lives. Just to say it was research driven. I mean a two-year project means that at the start of the project you go out to language teachers, you go out directly to migrants and ask them what do you need? We know that language teaching is taken taking place. Essentially, we, we went out and said, what else do you need? What is missing in the current language provision uh, that you are receiving? What other skills might be useful, particularly skills beyond language, to enable you to empower yourself uh, to, in, to manage your own integration more successfully? So that the, the material that was developed is actually uh, driven by the voice of teachers such as Astrid, and the voice of migrants themselves. Um, and that's where the logic of the project comes from. The vision, um, just to go back to the basics, was to enable um, migrants, refugees to develop intercultural and people skills to drive uh, social inclusion as they improve their language abilities. York Associates, uh, with the company I represent in the UK, has been involved in language teaching for the last 30, 40 years. Strangely, our, our belief is that language training, of course, is not enough to be an effective communicator. We have always uh, supported the integration of soft skills and inter, intercultural skills into language training as a kind of hybrid product. And we wanted 
uh, to reach out to language teachers running integration classes and encourage them also to integrate people and intercultural skills. So that was the idea in terms of bigger role. It will be language, culture, and particularly people skills, which is not classically in the domain of, uh, of language teaching. And then the promise was to develop a range of materials, which we then made available free of free at source for anybody institutionally or individually who wanted to use the material. Uh, why did we focus so much on language teaching? Why did we focus on inclusion? I mean, inclusion is an interesting topic. Um, it represents a significant um, challenge for the EU. As the statistics on the screen show, 21.6 million uh, third country nationals now live within the EU. The, the evidence indicates the 54% that much of the, the process of integration is problematic, that it's not particularly successful at many levels and for many reasons. But interestingly, you know, the one thing that is consistent in the management of integration across the EU is that everybody gets language training. Everybody gets local language training. That's, that's the one constant. And therefore the role of the language trainer is particularly a vital one. And therefore we thought that if we could equip language teachers with more skills, with more tools, we could uh, really help and facilitate the whole integration process. So that was a little bit the inspiration. The tangible deliverables of the project were just three. Firstly, a teacher training course, because we believed that we needed to teach the teachers first in order to enable them to stretch and to teach new skills. You know, we did not assume that language teachers were comfortable with intercultural communication. We didn't assume that teachers, language teachers, were comfortable teaching soft skills. So a major part of the work was to develop quite a comprehensive train the trainer program of around 30 hours. And again, we also thought that it's not only teachers who might be interested in this, it's support workers, it's NGO, it's possibly people working in the public sector in countries who are migrating, uh, uh, who are integrating uh, and uh, interfacing with migrants, that it might be useful for these individuals to also grow their skills in order to manage uh, a complex environment. Then the core of the program, in a sense, was to develop teaching materials to use in the classroom. And the third component was a series of 24 video testimonials. It's basically migrants speaking directly to camera three to four minutes, basically talking about their journey to the EU and the success factors which has enabled their successful uh, integration, on occasion unsuccessful. And those testimonials are in a sense partly a marketing product to make stakeholders aware of the importance of this phenomenon, but also can be used in the classroom uh, simply to raise awareness, simply to stimulate discussion. So then what was the syllabus of the program? Uh, what did the research indicate was required by language teachers from the point of view of the language teacher and the point of view of the migrant? And here is the syllabus we developed. These were the top 10 uh, hot topics that people said they needed support with. They needed skills to navigate um, successfully, to empower themselves to, to integrate. Firstly, understanding what social inclusion means, understanding it as a process, understanding the challenges, understanding the potential strategies at a kind of meta level. And then secondly, it's a range of critical people skills, how to build rapport, you know, how to understand what is polite in different contexts, and potentially to, to flex across different styles of politeness as a communicator, how to handle conversations when stereotyping is taking place, how to handle conversations when taboo topics arise. So these are quite close to conflict management in a sense, so as to maintain relationships and not to destroy the potential for integration. Humor is, a, is of course a key strategy for building relationships. It's a central part of of native speaker discourse, but of course can be very alienating to those from a foreign culture coming into an environment. So kind of navigating the challenge of humor, uh, playing with different communication styles, uh, talking a lot, talking a little, being direct, being indirect, uh, being silent, being noisy, 
encouraging people to understand the range of different styles that they may encounter uh, as they enter the new country and countries. Talking about nonverbal communication, the value of a smile, the value of a straight face, uh, the, the rules relating to, to body contact, hugging, handshaking, bowing, getting people to think about managing their nonverbal behavior effectively for other people. And then of course, more structural issues such as dealing with institutions, um, particularly things like hospitals, dentists, very, very important institutional stakeholders for migrants. But of course you're having um, people coming into Western Europe from environments where there isn't that infrastructure at home. So the institutions can be very, very alien. Then uh, managing the job market, um, understanding how to get a job, how to handle yourself with an employer, how to handle yourself with job colleagues in order to maintain your job. And then the, the one that we will look at tonight, uh, building social networks, a very important part of long-term integration success, the idea that building connections with locals, not just building a, a, a social network of, of, of fellow migrants, which is an important survival mechanism, but also building connections to locals as well. So, and we will look at that, uh, uh, some of the sample material with you tonight. And Astrid will share her experiences of teaching some of that material. So that's the syllabus. In addition, we also developed a range of activities which would encourage teachers to go beyond the classroom, to reach out to hospitals, to schools, to cafes, to supermarkets, to employers, um, to, 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 the, to the job centers of, of cities um, and to employers and actually try to run activities either on site uh, at these institutions or to invite the institution to the classroom to break down the barriers uh, between different parts of society. So we also developed kind of co-stakeholder activities, getting the language teacher into society with students. And again, a range of activities all of which will be available for download. So that was the big picture. Let's drill down a little bit into social networking. Just to explain the structure of the train the trainer, which is what we'll look at first. Um, there were two, two structures, there's pill A and pill B, strange names, but that was the decision we took. Um, part one, pill A is basically around theory for the teacher, understanding the concept of a social network, Part B um, was about skills, equipping teachers with the skills themselves, understanding the skills of, of what it means to build a social network. Uh, so again, conceptually, we, we believe that we needed to give teachers the skills themselves before they could go into the classroom and teach them. What does that look like? Well, you know, the, the materials are quite classical, warm up activities, getting people to brainstorm what is a social network, how important is it? So a classical uh, warm-up activity. Then giving skills, which I, and this skill is a very interesting one, visualizing your network, actually taking time with a pen and a, and a piece of paper to draw down what your network actually looks like. This is a, an activity I actually do in all my leadership training at the moment. And it's immensely useful to actually put on paper what uh, your network looks like, who you know, who you don't know, where are the strengths, where are the good relationships, where are the bad relationships, and therefore how can you navigate that to a better position. Then skills uh, for, for networking, things like listening actively, finding things in common, uh, laughing at other people's jokes, um, being energetic and positive, so understanding what makes you attractive as a person uh, to another individual who would therefore want to see you more regularly. And then actually beginning to think, well, what language skills could we link to these kinds of behaviors? Because again, we're working mainly with language teachers, giving them the skills to teach the language uh, so students can do this. Fundamentally, in both the train the trainer, which you're looking at now, and the student material, there is reflection. Uh, so at the end of each session of the train the trainer, there is the question, you know, what can language teachers do? to help students grow their networks? What difficulties might students have about talking about their social networks in the classroom? Astrid will give some very interesting insights on that. And then how can teachers perhaps manage uh, these challenges successfully? Um, 
Astrid, maybe I pull you in now because uh, you actually stepped into the classroom and it's very interesting. When we created the materials, I remember creating the question, what difficulties might students have uh, talking about their social networks? I, I had no real idea of the difficulties, but you experienced them firsthand, didn't you? Yes, I did. So um, I was testing this unit and um, of course we started, as you all have seen, with the definitions and some brainstorming and that worked all fine. And then it came to the visualization. So drawing the own network, social network. And um, so I gave the students uh, some time. I had a group of um, migrants from, from countries like Syria, um, Palestine, Iraq, Iran, and so on. Um, and basically they were learning German on level C1, but then I tried this material with them. So after a while, I asked them about their drawing and there was just one person who actually did this task. And I asked the group, hey, why didn't you do it? And then the first one opened up and said, you know, I've got some psychological problems and therefore I don't really have so many social contacts at the moment. That means I cannot really do this exercise or perform this task because I just don't have a network. That was a bit uh, sad. And then we took a moment to, yeah, to uh, give uh, the classmates some comfort. And then um, I asked the next person, hey, what about you? Why didn't you do this? And um, she was a student from Turkey. And then she explained, you know what? It sounds so nice creating social networks, but it can actually be very dangerous. <laughs> And I asked dangerous, why? And then she explained, look, I'm a political refugee and we had to leave Turkey because of social networks, um, because of certain social contexts. Then she explained that her husband is a dentist and uh, once in an emergency situation, he had to um, work with a person who was apparently uh, not seen as a positive person by the government and somehow somebody spotted them together and that created a lot of problems for them uh, as much as so much that they had to leave the country later on so she explained it can be very very dangerous creating a network and even here in Germany they do not feel safe so she is very reluctant and therefore not only in the virtual world but also in the real world she is very very careful creating context and therefore she did not um, visualize a network so that was an interesting thing to learn of course uh, because normally we, we think we can just give some inspiration and uh, some ideas how to um, yeah, create context and build up a network but learning also from the perspective and experiences of the migrants it was quite um, touching and it was very interesting and uh, yeah that was basically the the experience I made with this material. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, it's interesting listening to your experience using the material, Astrid. I mean, there was also when you you told me the story of, of your experience testing the materials. It was what was also interesting was the emotional change that happened in the classroom, and how although these are very difficult topics, and you might think therefore ah we shouldn't do this, uh, it's inappropriate. Um, the, the kind of discussion had a very profound impact on the relationship between yourself and the students, didn't it? Can you say a little bit about that, actually? Absolutely. So this is, it's far beyond language training. So you, you step into personal topics and people open up mm -hmm. more or less automatically. And um, we all came each other a bit closer in this um, lesson. Um, yeah, also later on uh, during the day, then suddenly uh, some participants wrote me some uh, personal messages uh, on, on WhatsApp, for example. So, uh, yeah, there was definitely, it, it was also like an icebreaker sort of thing. Yeah? So it was interesting. Definitely it um, created a new level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I like that terminology, creating a new level. I think that's very much the ambition of the project. We believe that, you know, language teachers are really at the cutting edge of supporting people coming in very difficult circumstances. And I think things like building a social network, although will be challenging for individuals because of uh, domestic political challenges or even psychological challenges, that doesn't mean that building a social network 
is not important. I mean, for individuals to survive in a host society, they will need to know uh, local individuals. So what's interesting is that teaching these skills, I think, can grow the relationship between teacher and student. I think it can grow the, the impact that teachers can bring to people's lives. Um, but of course, it brings challenges to the teacher in terms of the skills to navigate newly complex types of conversation um, and you know, building a profound relationship, managing the new intimacy that actually comes in the classroom. So I think it's both a, an opportunity, but of course, a challenge. Um, so I know that we've got mainly teachers in the room. So let's have a look uh, on, the, on the learner material that we developed. Because again, as I said, we had two elements to the project, train the trainer material. You had to look at some of those materials, but also materials which teachers could use with students in the classroom. Now, in terms of language level, we decided, uh, as always, to go for a B1 plus kind of uh, position because we believe you can teach that down and you can customize the material, maybe take out some of the complex expressions, or you can teach B1 material up actually all the way to C1 at the end of the day. Because as, as Astrid said, this is not strictly speaking a language course. You're not really teaching grammar, vocabulary, uh, pronunciation. You're teaching communication skills for people to use the English they have more effectively to build better relationships. Um, so what did we do to start? Well, again, you start with the classical question. What is networking? What are the main benefits of building a social network? Uh, have you invested time in this? And what's the hardest thing about this for you? I mean, even asking simple questions like that, you could find yourself 60 minutes later still, dis still discussing because it will unpack. I think you found this as well, Astrid. It unpacks a lot of experiences, um, a lot of tough experiences. And also, you know, not, not many people are, are very familiar with the idea of building a social network. What does that actually mean? So to introduce the skill, you actually need to talk about it a little bit and realize it's something I probably do, but not consciously, not formally. But if you formally do it, maybe you can grow it more strategically. Then this is one element of the unit. We ask people to profile yourself. You know, what kind of networking style do you like? Uh, what kind of networker are you? Are you a, a type one? Uh, you wanna meet people who are mainly similar to you, for, for instance, migrants, which may not be a language phenomenon simply. It may simply be a, a psychological phenomenon. I prefer similarity rather than diversity. Type two is somebody who just enjoys stepping outside their comfort zone. They enjoy uh, difference. Type three is a little bit more instrumental. They want to meet people who will bring benefits to them. They're a little bit more targeted uh, who they have conversations with. Type four are just the, the fisher people of the planet. They cast out their net into the world and they just pull it in and they meet anybody. No objective, no needs. They just love to, to meet people without any sense of benefit. It's quite good to know who you are and then to think why you do that and then to think what are the advantages, what are the disadvantages, all of which is building a kind of sense of who am I and who do I want to be, um, which again is the essence of soft skills. It's, it's, it's interacting with people more thoughtfully and a bit more strategically. Now we know we're dealing with language teachers, so we did the classical thing. We did a skills activity where you have four skills of, of uh, networking, active listening, speaking clearly, which is a key competence actually, not really taught much in language teaching. Speaking clearly is not the same as using good, glang, good grammar. It's not the same as using the right vocabulary. It might mean speaking not so much. <laughs> it might mean reducing your volume. Um, it might mean um, defining words as you go along. It might mean repeating things so that you enable other people to understand you. You're speaking clearly is actually a complex activity, which is about making your message understandable to other people. Asking questions, of course, and then the very interesting strategy, offering help. Now, networking is not a one-way street. You are much more likely to grow your network if you go out and spontaneously offer other people help first. Then they're more likely to help you secondarily. So that's a very, very important philosophy of networking, uh, support first, and then you will get the support coming back. You brainstorm what other strategies are significant. You look at the language 
and then you match it to the skill. The interesting thing about the language, you will notice it is very simple. Uh, it's probably B1 minus in a way. And that's the interesting thing about skills and language. With relatively simple language, you can perform very sophisticated skills. And again, I think that's again, going back to the role of the language teacher, we can achieve so much more sometimes than we do if we focus on skills with simple language rather than equipping people with more complex language. Very often, if you give people more language, you disable them as a communicator because other people don't understand the language they're using, strangely. Uh, then, of course, a reflection to finish. The students are asked, what are the biggest uh, language and communication challenges you face during the role play? So the, the session always finishes with role plays, meeting somebody in a cafe, building a relationship, meeting somebody on the street, uh, building a relationship, meeting somebody at a party. Typical context where people have to interact, form a relationship, and maybe then set the seed for a future relationship. Asking people, what can you do to solve them? And then asking, you know, just one thing you can do to be a more effective networker. And it could be as simple as I will meet one person if you're living in Stockholm. I will, I will meet one local Swede in the next 10 days. Just giving people simple objectives to grow their tentacles into the host society. So that's it. Um, the materials will be available on the All In uh, website, uh, which I will make available uh, on this slide deck for you for, to download, that a network of teachers using this material is growing. So if you're interested in the material, not only download it from the website, but also use the website as an opportunity to connect with other teachers doing this kind of work in other countries. I'm also a great believer in networking for teachers to grow our skills uh, in this particular domain. Um, please give other people that you know uh, this information. It could be that they want to use this information, even if you don't. So please spread the word. And um, if you have any ideas about doing more work in this field together, then please uh, get in touch. OK, uh, those are the emails for Astrid and myself. Um, we would be delighted to hear from you if you have any thoughts, comments, interests. Um, uh, interest in developing more materials using the templates that we've created. As I said on the former slide, the project is finishing, but for me, this is a start. Um, Astrid, I mean, I hope that you were the teacher who guinea pigged all of this material. I think it gave you some inspiration to do more of this, yeah? Definitely, yeah. It was a really good experience, and I will definitely go on using the material. Yeah, and just think about it. As a language teacher, you enable somebody to build better relationships. You enable somebody to, to, to manage alienating humor in a conversation. You manage, um, they can manage taboo topics. They can deal with stereotypes when they're raised in conversation. I mean, these are the topics that migrants indicated they're not in our language training at the moment. We need support with this. So if you're out there doing this kind of work, I think there's a set of materials free to use. Please go and use it. So that's it. Uh, I don't know if there are any questions that anybody has in the chat that they would like to raise with either Astrid or myself. Uh, I can see Maritza saying it's very interesting, um, which is good. I hope it is. I'm very passionate about the subject. Um, if there are any questions, Astrid and I would be delighted to, to answer. I don't see any questions in the chat at the moment. I guess you've had a very busy day at the conference. Astrid, anything more that we should say, do you think? I think basically that's it, right? Um... Okay, very good. Thanks, Annette. A very helpful 30 minutes. I hope that it was uh, helpful. Um, please do get in touch. My mission with this project is not to run a project. It is to get teachers using this material. So I'm working now very hard to reach out to stakeholders, um, and to get access to other conferences to spread the word. So thank you very much for your attention, for your time. Very much appreciated. And Astrid and I will wish you a very good evening, I guess. Yep. Good evening. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Diana. And Anna, Diana, please do get in touch if you have uh, any questions.